Hello, welcome back to another video from the Red Candlestick. Today's going to be a much shorter video than usual. Usually we, you know, go pretty in depth about a lot of the things that we talk about. Today we're going to be talking about the commodity bubble. But also, not, not just about the commodity bubble, but that many things in the commodity bubble have already popped. And this should be a sign of an end of the market cycle. Um, so first thing I want to explain is why are commodities in a bubble? And the best way to explain this is to do with China massive corporate debt. $27 trillion in corporate debt. 159% debt to GDP ratio. That's even higher than Japan, it's higher than Europe, it's higher than many of the emerging markets, it's higher than the globe, it's higher than the U.S. As it shows here. Um, and you can also see that, um, you know, bonds in China, corporate bonds, especially recently, if you look at, you know, obviously it's unfair because they have had major growth, but they have, you know, been continuing to go up. Um, the amount has doubled in the past five years. Um, and, you know, it's expected. Um, if we see, China is one of the biggest consumers of many of our um, different types of commodities around. Coal, aluminum, nickel, zinc, copper, iron ore, lead, platinum, hydropower, platinum, oil, natural gas, nuclear energy, all of this. Now, coal is the most interesting since it basically crashed because of the China's actions. Obviously, this affects energy stocks. Um. I, I remember crude oil went down um, on Friday, like, over 10%, which is quite insane. Uh, aluminum? Aluminum has seen a price drop very recently. Nickel is one of the ones that have seen, has just seen a price continuing to rise. Zinc? had a huge spike and now is down a little. Copper has been trading sideways. And iron ore, iron ore is very interesting Is this, the main reason why this has gone down so significantly is because of the real estate crisis in China. Since they used a lot of steel to produce their housing and steel requires iron. It also requires coal. So this makes sense why these two look most affected by what's happening in China. Now all of these should be affected at some point by what's happening in China. And you know, obviously this is something that I would not be too concerned about. It's a natural behavior. But if we look at long term, we can see that usually around 2008, well, around like times of high speculation so 2011-2008 there are a lot of commodity firms. I mean nickel was at more than double it is today so I would not be too worried about this actually compared to human history now obviously people get worried about this stuff because of inflation because it causes issues in, in the world. Like, it's not good that people can buy less. Like, people need food, they need water, they need all of those things to survive. So it's not... Actually, iron was insane. It was at an all-time high compared to anywhere in the past. So, you know, people... You know, it's not good. Actually, bull markets compared to popular belief, are not good for people. 
long, long bull markets. Irrational. now. They're not good for people because this is what happens. Prices skyrocket, especially and mainly to do with low interest rates like I've been talking about. I, I can go back to the world government bond website and show that, you know, especially in a place like the United States or something, um, which, you know, I always use the United States since the United States is where I live and where many people on YouTube watch because the United States is a major first world economy. And if you look over time, this our yields are much lower than any historical time in the past. Um, this is a short period of time. Now, if I go maybe to a 10 year, I'm going to see much longer. Yeah, so they used to be much, much higher. Obviously, this is not, you should not compare it to this, but still, they used to be much higher. And that's the point. Since they used to be much higher, and now they are even lower than ever, and the amount of money in circulation has gone up, it is expected that commodity prices would go up. Same thing with 2008. People had easy access to money, so prices went up. And then everything collapsed. That's what, ha that's what happened to the 2008 crisis. Because those... I mean, the underlying was not even good. They had adjustable rate mortgages, which interest rates were going up during the time. So it's kind of absurd that people did not see it coming. But, you know, a lot of people did not see things coming because they... People turn an eye to a lot of things. Obviously, I might... I'm not really overcomplicating this. I'm just using very, very simple, you know. People, people see that this is high. This is much lower than that. This is incredibly high compared to anywhere else. This is a long period of time. This is longer than 10 years. I mean, this is a lot of data. And people can tell we're high and low. So, this stuff is not very complicated. I mean, if you compare businesses, you know, price earnings, and then their price, I mean, that's a good starting point to value something you expect. Cash flow is even better. The growing cash flow is a good sign. Lowering their debt uh, compared to their asset size is good too. Especially if they have high debt. But it's not always a bad thing either. So, like, you gotta understand these things. But, you know, part of the video is just about understanding that it's not actually the greatest thing to be in a bull market. And this is one of the reasons why. So it might be actually good if the, the commodity bubble pops. Even if it hurts, you know, a lot of people's retirements or portfolios. It really does not hurt. It's not, it's not meant to hurt people. It, in the end, it will help more people than it hurts. Because that means that if more people have access to food, water, more people have access to homes, all of that, the world, the world is better off. And you know, more, in the way that more people have access to that is, you know, a balance between interest rates and assets. And, you know, obviously being conser obviously a government being more conservative with their money. And, yeah, it's not very complicated. And also a government, you know, holding people's freedoms. Like, fighting for people's freedoms. I, I don't know how I was supposed to say that, but you get the point. Um, protecting people's freedom, fighting for people's freedom. So all that stuff. You know, all that stuff is pretty important. I don't know where I'm getting here. But, you know, you get the idea. Um, that's about the end. And there's not much else I can really say. 